the Galaxy A8 Plus. Now, before we talk about that, let's talk about the A8 series itself. It's been quite an interesting one. Launching in 2015, the first Galaxy A8 sported an Exynos 5430 chip, a marginally improved version of the chip used in the previous year's flagship Galaxy S5. Then, the 2016 edition of the A8 sported a Exynos 7420 chip, the same chip that was used in, again, the previous year's flagship Galaxy S6. So it seemed like Samsung was offering great value with the A8 series. Last year's flagship chip in a new body at a lower price seemed like a formula was set. But there was no A8 2017. But in the December of 2017, Samsung announced not one, but two A8s, the A8 2018 and the A8 Plus 2018. And the latter is what made its way over to India. This time around, Samsung's kind of tweaked their formula a little. Is this tweak a change for the better? Or is it a disappointing regression? Well, let's find out in this video. But before we do, if this is your first time here or in case you just flat out can't remember, my name's Ash, you're watching C4E Tech and welcome to our full review of the Galaxy A8 Plus. If you do end up liking this video, give it a thumbs up, get subscribed and click on that bell icon down below to become part of a notification squad. So let's start with that little tweak that I've mentioned. In the past, the A8 phones, you know, without the build-in design would kind of take a back seat. This time around, Samsung paid a lot more attention to build-in design. In fact, the first thing that pops at you when you pick this one up is its design. It's got glass to the front and back and metal to the sides, very reminiscent of Samsung's flagships from 2017. And just like them, the back here is a fingerprint magnet too. I'm happy that Samsung has included a plastic case with this phone. One area where the A8 in fact betters the Samsung flagships is with regards to the fingerprint scanner placement. Finally, common sense prevails. It's a lot easier to hit. The scanner is quite fast and accurate too. So moving on, at 191 grams, the A8 Plus is not the lightest of phones, but it still manages to feel quite nice and sturdy in hand. And while that large six inch display means that single-handed usage is no longer a possibility, with the case on, I never felt like I was gonna drop this one. With the case off, well, that's an entirely different thing. Now, speaking of drops, this one has a Sundar display to the front. Jokes apart, Samsung spot the Infinity display to the A8. This is a six inch 18.5 by nine Super AMOLED display with rounded corners. The resolution is lower than that on the flagships, but that doesn't mean the display is bad. It's still got a respectable Full HD Plus resolution that's 2220 by 1080. And because it's AMOLED, there are inky blacks and vivid colors. The pixel density is still over 400 pixels per inch, meaning it's amply sharp for everything but VR. The viewing angles are excellent. It is covered by Gorilla Glass for protection and the panel gets bright enough to be legible even under the hot Chennai sun. So overall, thanks to this display, the design looks great. In hand, the A8 Plus is very similar to the Galaxy Note 8. In fact, the, for the first hour or so that I used this phone, I kept wanting to pull the S Pen out or kept expecting the iris scanner to show up, but nope. This is not a flagship. That's all the more evident by the chip underneath. Here's a bit of the regression I was talking about. While the A8s of the past have sported last year's flagship internals, the A8 Plus 2018 sports the mid-range Exynos 7885 Octa. As the name implies, this is an octa-core chipset sporting two high-powered Cortex-A73 cores clocked at 2.2 GHz, along with six lower-powered Cortex-A53 cores clocked at 1.6 GHz each. Given that Samsung decided to up the build and display on this one, they had to cut corners somewhere to keep the pricing down, and it looks like the SoC bore the brunt of it. Now, don't get me wrong, the 7885 it still does perform pretty well in day-to-day -day usage, but when you switch over to intensive tasks like gaming, you can see frames being dropped here and there by the Mali G71 GPU inside. That said, it's not bad. It is a reasonably good mid-range chip. Additionally, six gigs of RAM meant multitasking on this one was a breeze. The A8 Plus also comes with a dedicated microSD slot along with 64 gigs of internal storage. For media lovers who want to carry their entire library along with them, this is quite a nifty feature. Speaking of media consumption, the included in-ear headphones sound decent. As far as the speaker goes, I like the placement to the side of the device. It doesn't get muffled while playing games, 
but it is not as loud as I'd like it to be. And by the way, no issues with cellular reception or call quality. Now powering all this, we have a 3500 mAh battery. As far as battery life goes, the A plus performed like a champ. I finished most days with lots of juice left in the tank. On less intensive days, I'd even end up with as much as 40% juice left. And even if I did happen to run out of juice, the A8 Plus supports fast charging. Anyway, with cameras, Samsung have done something they've never done before, dual cameras. Wait, what? Doesn't the Note 8 have dual cameras? Yes, it does, but that's to the back. This one's got dual cameras to the front, a 16 megapixel f1.9 primary shooter and an 8 megapixel f1.9 secondary shooter to help with live focus shots like these. Okay, okay, let's call it portrait mode. You know, more people know that. The results are great, similar to the ones we shot using the View 10's front-facing camera, reasonably good edge deduction, and a strong background blur. Just like with live focus on the Note 8, the strength of the blur can be changed here to before or even after clicking the selfie. Even with the regular selfies, they turned out quite nice. The sharp, have good colors, and dynamic range is okay. By default, the selfies have very good skin tones. But if you're someone who likes the pinkish tones you get on phones like you know, some of the Oppo phones, Samsung's provided a slider to do that too. Now moving on to the 16 megapixel rear facing camera, under good lighting conditions it performed really well. It managed to capture a lot of detail. Now look at this image, the dust, the web, everything's crisp. Auto HDR did a sufficiently good job. It detected scenes that required HDR more often than not. The dynamic range was great for the most part. In challenging scenes, it kind of struggled a bit, but even then I'd call it above average. The color reproduction was reasonably good. There was a little bit of oversaturation going on. In scenes with dull colors, it kind of helped improve the overall look of the image. Like here, the colors looked very dull in reality. But in scenes like this, where the colors already are kind of eye popping, the camera oversaturating them did make the final image look kind of meh, especially the reds. Here's another photo with oversaturated reds. Anyway, for the most part, I find the color reproduction to be more than just fine. So I'm not really gonna consider it a con. Overall, outdoors, the performance is definitely laudable. Under low light, the A8 Plus performed quite well. The relatively large 1 by 2.8 inch sensor with a wide aperture lens made their presence felt. The images are fairly bright and have decent colors. That said, when you zoom in, you realize that a lot of the details lost due to the smudged up appearance of the image. I'm not able to clearly see the texture of the road here or the texture of the wooden gate in this image. It is some weird software processing for noise reduction that seems to be causing the image to look more like an oil painting. Although if you're someone who wouldn't want a pixel peep, then it really shouldn't matter all that much to you. You know, for social media or something, the images are perfectly fine. The A8 Plus can also shoot 1080p videos at 30 frames per second. Now that is a huge con to begin with. No 4K at this price in 2018? Seriously, Samsung, come on. Now to add fuel to fire, it comes with focus hunting issues as well. It is very clearly noticeable. The quality of the footage too is nothing to write home about. It's moderately sharp and has natural colors. The dynamic range leaves a lot to be desired. Speaking of cameras, Samsung has implemented their own version of face unlock on this device. There are two modes, one which favors speed over security and vice versa. Do you want us to do a face unlock test between this and the 5D iPhone 10, View 10? Maybe let me know which phones you'd like to see us spit it against and what kind of video you'd want in the comments below. We'll try to make that happen. Now, other than locking your phone, you can use Face Unlock to also log into websites using Samsung Pass. Think of it as kind of like LastPass. It supports face recognition as well as fingerprints and thanks to the better positioning, I found myself using the fingerprint scanner as well as inbuilt gestures almost every day. Ah yes, you can gesture to bring up Samsung Pay, arguably the one feature other than IP68 that kind of sets this phone apart from the competition. I just absolutely love Samsung Pay. Just the convenience of not having to carry a wallet is awesome. Samsung has also shoved in a ton of other features like secure folder, games mode, one-handed mode, as well as something called dual messenger, very similar to parallel space. It lets you run two instances of WhatsApp or Skype or some other messengers. 
So cool, Samsung seems to have come a long way with their UI and it shows with the polish and the attention to detail. Yes, there is still an overflow of features, but it no longer bogs the phone down like it used to. And oh yeah, the A8 also boasts of all the sensors including gyroscope. Kudos to Samsung there. Probably the only brand that I'd be saying kudos for including basic sensors in a 33,000 rupee phone. But yay, it's Samsung, what can you say? The only thing that does disappoint me in this entire software experience is that Samsung released the A8 Plus with Nougat on board. For a phone to be released without Oreo in January 2018, now that's just plain all unacceptable. So this is weird and I really hope Samsung pushes out an update sooner rather than later. And with that, we get to the part where we generally talk about price, but I kinda said that already, 33,000 rupees. You know, it kind of ends up competing with the View 10 and of course the OnePlus 5T. Now, both these phones have the A8 Plus beat with regards to a number of key metrics. They perform better, they have better rear cameras and arguably better software support. So, who is the A8 Plus for? To answer that question, I'd have to say it's for someone who wants a tier 1 brand, a phone from a tier 1 brand, someone who really wants that Samsung branding. Maybe it's just for peace of mind, maybe it's for Samsung's service, maybe it's for resale value, but you know, if you're somebody who wants Samsung branding and if you want the best selfie cameras that the budget can offer, then the A8 Plus is probably for you. You know, I do kind of like this phone. Honestly, in the last few years, even mid-range chips offer enough performance that the performance gap between them and flagship chips don't really cause a huge difference. And the small creature comforts of having Samsung Pay, the ability to withstand the occasional splash, and yes, those selfies combined together, it makes for an experience that is quite good. So while the A8 Plus is most definitely not the best bang for your buck, if you do, like I said, want a tier phone from a tier one brand that looks great, is a kind of a eye-catching, head-turner, uh, and an all-rounder while, while it does that, then the A8 Plus might just be for you. So what do you guys think? Would you choose the A8 Plus over the other two phones I just mentioned? Do you value, uh, as in do you have such a requirement for brand value? Do you rate that so high? Let me know your thoughts in the comments below. And while you're down there, also let us know if you want these phones to go head-to-head -head in a direct comparison. So. That's it. If you do like Samsung, if you're excited for the Galaxy S9, then share this video. I mean, it has nothing to do with the S9, but then again, I thought it was a cool way to put it. After all, they do share a similar back design. Anyway, if you hate having options, then you know what to do. But if you did like this video, then drop us a like, subscribe to the channel, and click on that bell icon so that you get notified each and every time a new video goes live on Chief 4 Retech. Thanks a lot for watching. Till next time, this here is Ash calling it like I see it. You guys have a great day. Bye-bye.